Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today, here in Iceland, I think we have, we're down to three cases of COVID, which is incredible. We are very lucky. Things are starting to feel like they're getting back to normal. Mia is back at the Dag Mama and Ingemar is back in the gym and I have been for a swim. So we're all kind of getting back into our little routines and it means that I have the place to myself so I can sit down, talk to you guys and give you a little update on Mia and what she's been up to. So the first thing, the first very exciting news is that Mia is finally walking. This to me is, I feel like for about nine or ten months I've been saying any day now. She is definitely not one of the kids that just figured it out and went off and did it. She took a while to start crawling and then did stand up, took a few steps and then just decided, nope, this is not for me. I want to hold on to mommy and daddy's hand and be carried around. So it did take a while and we were a little bit worried about that as well and so we did go to the doctor and check that she's okay and that there's nothing else that we can be doing and they actually referred us to a specialist so we have been taking her to a physio for the last couple of weeks the physio said she's absolutely fine she's just gonna take her time to do this it's not hugely common but it's not something to worry about but of course you do worry you worry about everything as a parent and that's part of your job we took her to the physio it was amazing it was basically like an assault course for children it was so much fun she got to just push around a car started walking there took a few steps we kind of look around see what she was doing see if mummy was watching she climbed stairs she played with the toys in the mirror and got to play musical instruments and they even had a basketball and lots of different toys so it was really fun for her to do it was like an indoor play center which there aren't a huge amount of them here and with covid and everything going on obviously they're all closed and they're a place to pick up germs so not the best idea right now <laughs> in this situation to be taking her to many parks and things so we had been going out on walks and taking the little um plastic push walker thing just getting her to walk absolutely everywhere so we've been you know doing everything we could and just being patient and eventually she has started walking now and I'm so excited. All these things you just get so proud as a parent when they figure them out and start doing them but at the same time they become these little humans, these little people with personalities and independence and she's quite a stubborn little girl. I wonder who she takes after and it's just great fun to see her develop. We also got her a pair of her first shoes. They're echoes, they're purpley pink, shimmery, they're so cool, they've got velcro, they're super easy to get on because quite a few baby shoes are cute but they're absolutely useless and you can hardly even get them on your child. So we've got her some really good first shoes. My friend Charlotte had the Clark foot measure thing so we used that and then I went to Barna Lopin, which is a second hand shop here and it was open because I don't want to go anywhere near malls right now but I wanted to get her some shoes so we went there we got some secondhand shoes I know that sounds a little bit worrying to buy secondhand shoes for your beautiful new baby it's not what I ideally wanted to do but in the grand scheme of things she needed shoes these shoes are good they're not too worn but they are worn which indicated that they were used and were useful to a child so we bought them and she loves them she absolutely loves having her shoes on the first night she wouldn't even take them off to go to bed and now she's just she's walking so much more and is really happy in them the next thing that quite a few people comment and message me on is Mia's eyes so Mia was born with strabismus which is a condition where your eye muscles kind of make it look like your eyes are crossing or slightly going in they're not as straight as I'm not going to say a normal child but they're not as straight as they're supposed to be and so we have seen a specialist since very early on which I have recorded a few videos on but I, I obviously don't want to draw too much attention to it. But I have had a lot of people message me directly because their child is also going through this. It might be something that we'll do more videos on in the future because Mia is going for another round of the Botox treatment. So around Christmas time, just after Christmas, she had 
an injection into both eyes so it's injected into the eye muscles to help them strengthen and build up their strength whilst the Botox is working and then after I think it's about six weeks the Botox stops working and the muscles will hopefully have trained to stay in place to keep the eyes straight. It has worked for her right eye but her left eye is still kind of going in especially when she's tired and so we're going to have a second injection in the next few weeks or months whenever we get an appointment for it. We have an amazing eye specialist here that we see and Mia's very happy with the treatment I guess. She's not too whiny when she's there and she gets bubbles at the end of it so when you're almost two. That's the next thing. Mia will be two next month. I already feel emotional about this. When she turned one, we were traveling, we were on holiday with family. She has a joint, she shares her birthday with her cousin, which is really exciting, but also makes it quite difficult because poor Gran Rosa has to decide which grandchild she's gonna be with. But this year, COVID has decided that for her and they're stuck in the UK and we're in Iceland. So I guess what we're gonna do is have a little gathering of family and friends here at home. I will probably go overboard on a theme for it and decorations and make a cake and cupcakes and all sorts of things and we'll FaceTime the family. Mia loves being on FaceTime. She loves waving to everyone, saying hi, answering the phone. On the phone yeah. Hi Gran! We're good, how are you? You want to speak to Mia? Okay, here she is. She's not there. Did she hang up on you? Oh. Hi. She's just grown up with it and is quite used to it. And especially with COVID and everyone being in lockdown, it's something that we've relied on and it's the only form of communication that we really have. It's how she sees her cousin, how she sees her gran and Eric and gets to see Gran's garden and see all the flowers and the birds in Gran's garden. And it's lovely because Gran gets to sing to her and Mia loves that too. But yeah, how do I have a two-year-old? Almost two-year-old. Little Miss Chatterbox, she is just adorable. I think you'll all agree with me, she's the cutest. <laughs> I'm completely biased there. Mia says lots and lots of different words. I have to note them down and remember them, but I'll obviously try and tell you them and record them as she says them. She's strong on no. No. <laughs> she says that in English. She says yes in Icelandic. Obviously Mia will learn and will speak two languages, so English and Icelandic. My Icelandic is coming along by learning through her and listening to Ingmar and Mia have conversations, which is great for me, definitely, because I don't want I don't want to feel like they have a secret language or something. I want to be able to actually communicate with her and understand her, but she understands that daddy speaks Icelandic and mummy speaks English, and it is incredible watching her mind understand both languages and be able to do everything that we're asking for her to do in whichever language. It's incredible. I'm so jealous of their little brains just soak up all of this information. It's fantastic. We're trying to keep it one language per person and you never know, I might bring in some Japanese, some Hindi and some Polish along the way. We'll have our own little secret languages from daddy as well. She says mama, dada. When you get in the car, she'll sit there and just say go, go and then we to go around the corner. Door, points to the door and wants out. She wants to go outside all the time with her little shoes on. She loves ball. She loves to throw things. She's very good at throwing. <laughs> Yay! Go and get them. Yeah! Good job! She has a dolly now, so we went to visit one of my friends who had a little baby the other day and she came home and just saw the doll sitting there which it has been there since Christmas time and she's not paid any attention to this doll but now she is absolutely all about Dolly. Dolly has breakfast with us, eats her toast before Mia eats her toast. She gives her cuddles and 
gets me to give her cuddles. She puts the blanket around the two of them when they're watching Peppa Pig together. <laughs> it's very cute. She was at a birthday party at the weekend and it was a boys birthday party. There was loads of cars there. So she was picking up the cars and doing room. So yes, of course, mummy went out and bought her some cars yesterday. <laughs> I have a song that she repeats and it's so cute. So I'll try and record that for you as well. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, walla, walla, bang, bang. <laughs> Another thing that probably toddlers do is just ram so much food into their mouth and Mia is absolutely one of those children that she just she's not happy until her mouth is absolutely jam-packed and she has to use her hands to stuff the food in there. It's quite disgusting to watch but she's very satisfied when she has a lot of food on the go. She's not one for fruit and vegetables. She den definitely doesn't have a sweet tooth, which is great because she's not interested in ice cream or chocolate or any of that kind of treat sort of things. She is definitely a meat lover. Chicken, beef, whatever it is, that's her treat. And she would quite happily just eat meat all day long. <laughs> Loves omelettes as well, a cheesy omelette, French toast, eggs and bread. Her favorite food is basically eggs, bread, cheese and meat. <laughs> that's about it. It's difficult to get fruit and veg into her. She'll, she'll have the odd slice of orange or apple without kind of being coerced into eating it. Peanut butter, she adores peanut butter just like mummy. She loves drinking from my cup. If anyone has any other cups she wants to drink from their cup. She likes to have her drinks in glasses. She loves a straw. She's quite adventurous so she's climbing all over, wants to get on the dining room chairs and sit on them instead of sitting on her high chair. So we're gonna use the trip trap chair so she can climb up and sit in that. She climbs all over the bed, she climbs on the sofa, she climbs up everything. She pulls all the books out of the bookshelves and does that at other people's homes as well. She loves dancing so if you sing to her or we put on some music she'll dance away and she loves when she does actions and then you copy her. She loves singing any kind of song so singing to her or she'll sing along with you she loves twinkle twinkle little star um wind the bobbin up and she does the actions for both of them wind it back again wind it back again pull pull clap 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 she loves head, shoulders, knees and toes, except she's not found her knees yet. <laughs> on YouTube, we'll put on the songs, that way we do simple songs. I try and do some Scottish songs to her as well, so that she doesn't kind of get an American accent. That sounds awful, I'm sorry, no offence to anyone who has an American accent, but it would be amazing if she had a Scottish accent, so we will hopefully let's see how that turns out. She loves drawing as well so I made the coffee table her little table and I painted it blackboard so she'll sit there and draw and give you a piece of chalk and try and get you to draw and make shapes and everything as well so that's been really fun. She'll also come over and draw on my iPad which is probably the most expensive toy that she's got. I'll be drawing for work and she'll come along and so I have to open up a new layer so that she can have a little draw. She loves using the Apple Pencil and <laughs> she's figured out how to get different um, pen strokes on it and everything so yeah she's gonna end up being a little bit of a spoiled girl if we stick with one. I'm not putting anything out there and don't go crazy in the comments because with her and her dolly I know she would be an amazing big sister. But for Mia's second birthday we are already starting to pick up some little treats and toys and presents for her. We have a birthday list going. I think that it's going to be quite difficult for family and friends abroad to send anything here because there's massive delays with shipping things and it's just not really that practical because you always have to pay import here. But I have been picking up little toys here and there and we have some exciting presents that mummy and daddy are gonna give her. Some fun things that we can assign to different family members so that she's got presents on her birthday as well. Probably not an iPad Pro. <laughs> so yeah, we're coming up to summer now, which means that another piece of exciting news Mia has a place in Legscully, which is kindergarten or nursery here in Iceland. And she will start, 
I think it's the end of August. But yeah, she's starting leg scully, which is just so grown up. She's definitely ready for it. And I'm really excited that she's got a place because I feel like she's ready to do this. She's ready for the new friends, more friends, more stimulation more challenge, more activities, and lots of outside time. I did walk to her leg scully the other day with her, but unfortunately she fell asleep by the time we had arrived, so she didn't get to play in the playground. It is good because it's close to where we stay. Here in Iceland, on the weekends, you're allowed to go in and use the playgrounds as a kind of park so we can start taking her there throughout the summer so she can get used to it so it won't feel like a completely new place for her to go. She will be finishing with the Dag Mama in the next few weeks then we'll have summer together as a family and then she'll start in leg scully and she'll be a big girl with a new bed probably. We've got a bed for her down in the basement. We haven't moved her into yet. I'm thinking that we just turn her room into a toddler's big girl's room with all of her toys in it. I'd love to get things like a teepee for her or make a teepee so that she can have her dolls in there and her teddies and all of her blankets that she likes to cozy and she loves books so flicking through books and getting story time in there would be so cute. I think that in the summer we might also turn her room from a nursery into a bit more of a toddler friendly room. Move some of the toys from the sitting room into her bedroom. But that feels like such a big move up right now. So there we go. That's the update from us on Mia. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. It feels nice to sit down and kind of have the place to myself and jump back on and talk to you guys. So if you would like any more update videos or if you have any questions about Mia or about anything that I've talked about in this video then please feel free to comment or send me a direct message on Instagram or by email and I will talk to you there. But I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you see all of the videos that we're posting and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.